PhD, Dr. Lane Norton, PhD, is back with a list of the top five offenders of science. So Lane Norton constantly smashing zealots, destroying the imaginary haters. Lane Norton beholden only to the truth, loyal only to science, is coming to lay down the law. So sit down, shut your zealot mouths, and listen to science. My name is Lane Norton, IFPA Pro Natural Bodybuilder. I'm 25 years old, I weigh 230 pounds in the off season, and 195 pounds at contest. My arms measure 18 inches, my chest measures 48 inches, my thighs 27, my calves almost 17. My best attribute, it's my dedication. I'm going to be the next pro natural champion. can't half diet, you can't even half diet in the off season because these guys that are coming in are hungry and if you do it anything halfway, they're gonna beat you. In my hands, the list of the top five worst offenders of science in the fitness industry. But before we get into that, I have to talk about our honorable mentions because there were some great names on this list that just didn't quite make it. So here are our honorable mentions. Ashy Vines. Miss, you can shut down the Krebs cycle by using keto. Logan Fusion Lean, who claims you can cure brain cancer with a ketogenic diet. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, keto is not a cure for cancer. In some studies, in certain cancers, it may have some benefits. It is not a cure. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know who this first chick is, Ashy Vines or whatever. No idea who she is. I'm sure Lane Norton really has no idea who she is either. But Logan, Logan Fusion Lean, he calls him. Uh, Logan Sneed on YouTube actually commented on the video. I've talked to Logan before. He's a great guy. Logan has been using a ketogenic diet as an adjunct therapy for brain cancer. For brain cancer. He's been using it effectively to keep his tumor from recurring, from coming back. And it's been working. Never have I heard Logan say that a ketogenic diet cures cancer. Never have I heard anybody say that a ketogenic diet cures cancer. In fact, the only person who I've even heard say that other people say that a ketogenic diet cures cancer recently is PhD, Dr. Lane Norton, PhD. So just because Lane says it's so, apparently Logan believes that keto cures cancer. Uh, very, very shady shady straw man in there mr lane norton um very very dishonest if you ask me but let's move on let's see who else he's got to mention ash norton my personal favorite it's very hard for me to keep her off this list uh miss perfumes are going to give you cancer mark hyman miss perfumes are going to give you cancer i'm not sure who he's talking about there uh but there are many industrial chemicals that are used in fragrances, in shampoos, and soaps that are known to cause cancer. We've got sodium lauryl sulfate, many, many other uh, toxic compounds that are in a lot of these beauty products, right? A lot of these cute hair products that you're probably using to look all handsome there, Mr. Lane Norton. I'm sorry, Dr. Lane Norton, PhD. A lot of those products do contain carcinogenic chemicals, and it's well known. So I'm not sure who you're talking about there, uh, but just because of knowing how you work, Lane, knowing how you roll, I'm very suspect of a lot of the claims that you make about other people's alleged claims. Paleo Pete Evans, also, another, if you can tell this is a trend, claims you can cure cancer with da, 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 keto. V Shred, I think his, I think maybe... Vince something. I, I actually didn't bother to look up the name because it was just too much. Brandon Carter, another keto. Wait, so you put somebody on your list and you don't even know their name? You didn't even look them up, but you put them on your list? Wow, Lane. I mean, this, this is some deep science here, Lane Norton, PhD. I'm very, very impressed with your deep sciencing that you're doing here. Uh, this is like, you know, some Bill Nye, Neil deGrasse Tyson level stuff. Uh, Pete Evans, 
Also throwing that name out there, I don't really know Pete Evans. I have no idea what he's all about. But does Pete Evans really say that keto can cure cancer? Does he really say that? I don't know. You guys comment down below. Does Pete Evans say that? I don't know the guy. But I'm highly doubtful. Keto is all And I think, I watched a video with Elgin Intensity talking about him. I believe it was him. And please correct me if I'm was, if I was wrong. He actually staged a fake fight with another YouTuber to get a bigger YouTube following and then actually end up getting arrested or stopped by police or something. It's pretty funny. So I don't know Brandon Carter either. But you just call him a keto zealot, right? So anybody who apparently promotes keto in any way, according to Dr. Lane Norton, PhD, is a zealot. Why are they zealots? Well, because science says so. How do we know science says so? I got three little letters for you, little idiot, subhuman, non-entities out there, hating on the good doctor. I got three letters for you, P-H-D. Jim Selter, Thomas Delauer. So hard for me not to put this guy on this list. <laughs> Ironically, a week ago, Thomas actually emailed me to collaborate. Uh, he's actually always been nice to me whenever we've interacted. Look how annoyed Lane is that Thomas is nice. Look at the, <laughs> look at the animosity. Look at the envy. Look at the spite. This dude emails him. I, I wonder if Lane even emailed him back. Right, is this Lane's response? <laughs> Somebody emails him to collaborate. Lane responds by making a video talking about how this person's a big dummy and a zealot. Typical. Doesn't change the fact that I think his claims are ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, actually emailed me to collaborate and I said that I thought that probably wasn't a good idea. Uh yeah. He's above you, Thomas DeLauer. <laughs> you zealot. Dr. Josh Axe, Nate Diesel. Uh, so he doesn't even need to give reasons why these people are on his list now. It's just it's just become a list of people that Lane Norton is envious of and doesn't like. By far the most mentioned person in the comments section when I first asked for nominees. And I, I gotta be honest, it's gonna be hard for me not to tip my hand on some of these in terms of who I think are the worst. And I'm just gonna come right out and say, I, I don't think this person is the worst. In fact, I had a hard time putting him on the list, but... He had so many votes, and he's cringy enough that I, I think I can. Uh, Greg O'Gallagher. <laughs> All right. Got to agree with Lane. Greg O'Gallagher, definitely worth a good laugh. Calls himself Batman, the, fat, the fitness Batman. Um, but isn't, isn't this funny? Lane says he didn't even want to put them on the list, but he just had to. Why'd you have to, Lane? Why'd you have to put poor Greg O'Gallagher on the list? Poor little Greggy boy. He's had a hard life. <laughs> this is funny. I mean, it, it really just seems to me like Lane is just listing off people that make him feel uncomfortable, people that make him feel threatened. I'm sure Lane will never admit this because in Lane's world, Lane's always right. He's got a PhD, guys. But to me, it seems like Lane has basically compiled a list of people that make him jealous. Kino Bobby. He was tagged a lot. As far as claims go, I, I can tell you, I don't think he's the worst out there. He basically promotes intermittent fasting, but the rub is that he sells intermittent fasting as a lifestyle that it's, it's kind of like the old beer commercials where like you pop a, bu a Budweiser at the beach and a bunch of hot girls in bikinis come around you. So that like selling you that if you drink alcohol, you get hot women. When I first got into bodybuilding, I, you know, I just started because when I was 15, I was insecure and no attention from girls. And I was real scrawny, I was about 125 pounds. I decided, you know, well, I could do something about this, so I started to lift. He's kind of selling that if you do intermittent fasting, you make you a superhero. And I, I think he actually referred to himself as the real life Bruce Wayne. So from what I saw, it's just his advertising is pretty cringy, but it seems to be working. There was a really interesting article. Some guy uh, hired him to help him lose weight. And I think the title of the article was how I hired the douchiest uh, person in fitness to help me lose weight or something like that. But I don't know, Greg, he may be perfectly fine, uh, but he made the list because he got comments on so much. And because he is kind of, the marketing is a little bit over the top. Our next one, Paige Hathaway. <laughs> Now, 
again, this is another one where I didn't think her claims were incredibly over the top, but she has such a large following that I put more emphasis on that. <laughs> so her claims aren't so bad, but people follow her. And that's what bothers Lane. So remember what Lane said earlier in his epic bodybuilding motivation video from like eight or 10 years ago. He said, you gotta be the most hungry. If you're not the most hungry, if you're not working the hardest, these other guys are gonna beat you. Looks like Lane might feel a little bit threatened by Paige's following. Poor Lane, he works so hard. He has a PhD, yet these insignificant anti-science non-entity zealots are stealing his shine. You know, when it comes to competition, you know, when you step on stage with somebody, if you want to win, you got to hate that person. And if that means that you've got to beat your friend or you've got to beat somebody you really like, you better not be scared to do that because if you are, you're not going to win. Uh, one of the biggest ones I saw was she claimed that a uh, supplement that she was promoting could help cure uh, heavy metal poisoning that we get through our water and this sort of stuff. And it has uh, spirulina and some other um, compounds from fungi. Well, I looked into this research and mostly... <laughs> All right, chlorella, chlorella especially, but spirulina also, it, it, they're known to, uh, to bind uh, heavy metals and toxins. Um, now, the depth at which these will detoxify you of heavy metals, that's, I'm, I'm not really so sure on that. But if you're going to try to debunk that, um, then you don't know what you're talking about, buddy. What these algae compounds are used for is... Uh, they do they do bind heavy metals, but they're used in aqueous solutions. So they're used in like water decontamination and that sort of thing, or if people are trying to purify different chemicals. Some of the studies in, in living organisms were pretty ambivalent. There was one that showed it uh, had no effect on cadmium poisoning, but there was another that did show rats that were injected with lead, uh, with lead acetate, and they supplemented with spirulina, actually had lower levels of lead than rats that weren't supplemented. Okay. Here's the rub. It was over four times the dose that you get in the supplement that she's selling. And basically when I looked at Paige. All right, so Lane Norton, who made his whole career, started his whole career around having a PhD and pushing branch chain amino acids, right? You have no room to talk, Lane Norton. Selling leucine and BCAA, selling useless supplements is your forte, my friend. Right? Teaching people how to do glorified sanctioned eating disorder pageants. Right? Teaching dudes to get in their skivvies, to rub each other down with oil, and to get up on stage in that thong and flex their ass off. <laughs> While buying your supplements is your whole shtick. That's your career. But you got a PhD, so everything you say must be true. Well, come on, man. Well, you're going to rip on her? Like, I'm, I'm not into the supplement sales either, dude. But you ripping on her seems pretty, pretty hypocritical, especially with your history of salvation and the BCAAs. Hey, Tathaway, I mean, she promotes waist trainers, organic coffee, pretty much looks like, you know, her sponsors. It just seems to be kind of the, the, the original basic Fitzbo account. I wouldn't put this as my like my worst defender of science. It's just that she has such a large following, influences so many people, and I think some of these claims are, are, are kind of ridiculous. And I... <laughs> I might slightly disagree with some of the claims on some technicalities, but she's got a really big following. <laughs> Isn't it funny how he just tells you exactly what's going on? It's all right in front of your face. Look at them 18-inch biceps, by the way. When the last time you measured them buys? I really don't like the fear-mongering around heavy metal poisoning. Ben Greenfield. <laughs> okay. I got to agree with him on this one. Ben Greenfield's a fucking dork. <laughs> Look at that purple lips. Technically, the legality of what we're about to do is pretty free. Biohacking, Ben Greenfield, biohacker, transhumanist, using all the latest technology to sell you all the latest technology. Ben Greenfield, he's another guy who's got a very similar shtick to BioLane. 
All right, if you guys watch Ben Greenfield when he was on Joe Rogan, it's basically three and a half hours of Ben Greenfield describing the various ways that he mechanistically masturbates himself with machines throughout the day. Right? The ways that this guy, the depths that this guy goes to, to sell us on nonsense is pretty much unparalleled. So I definitely agree. Ben Greenfield is a freaking dork. I don't know the guy. Maybe he's a real nice guy in, in, in real life. But um, yeah, the stuff he's selling you on, all this biohacking language, this transhumanist language, I definitely agree that this shit is lame. Now, I wouldn't agree. I, I don't know why you don't like Ben Greenfield. We'll get to that in a moment. But the reason... I'm not really into this whole biohacking thing. Is because of the way that it ties into the uh, philosophical, cultural movement towards transhumanism, towards the dehumanization of people, towards the outsourcing of our thinking, of our feeling, and of our being to machines. I'm not so into this stuff, and I'm definitely not into the marketing of all the nonsense supplements, the testing, all this shit that Ben Greenfield sells people on. Right? But... Let's hear what PhD, Dr. Lane Norton, PhD, has to say about Ben Green of Help. I'm flabbergasted by the number of people. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> we, need, we need a loop. We need, we need a song, uh, like a, like a uh, techno song with Ben Greenfield loops on it, just saying flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. And then you can put like little Terrence McKenna clips in there. When the mushroom speaks to you in the depths of your experience in silent darkness. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was lame. People who navigate through life with brain fog and with digestive issues, with poor sleep, and are simply not operating at the full capacity of what a human being should be able to operate. So Ben Greenfield, who you can also find on milk cartons from the 1980s with the missing child pictures on it. Um, let's see what Lane, what problems Lane's got with what Ben Greenfield is selling us. This is another quote-unquote biohacker. Uh, I believe Ben was uh, formerly an athlete. He's been on a lot of podcasts. He's been on uh, my friend's Mind Pump. Uh, he's been on the Joe Rogan Experience. Uh, so he has a pretty big... Hide that jealousy. Hide that jealousy. He went on the Joe Rogan experience all alone. He didn't need Don Diagostino to hold his hand. The arrogant prick. Following. Uh, one of the ones that, that's interesting about him is he injects his own stem cells. Now, I was actually just at a, an actual longevity clinic a couple weeks ago. Actual and longevity clinic. That they Science. Was that injections of your own stem cells are usually not that effective. You really need um, specific stem cells. And even when I, like I was actually had a hip injury years ago where I talked about getting, I thought- Okay, you also don't know what you're talking about though, Lane. Come on, dude. This is why you're picking on Ben Greenfield. Not all the million machines he uses to masturbate himself with on a daily basis. Not the silly testing that he tries to sell you on so he can sell you on his super expensive program of supplementation and diet. That's not what you're going to pick on. You're going to pick on stem cells? Dude, stem cells are known to work. There are people who travel to Panama, who travel to other countries in Latin America in order to have their own stem cells taken out of their body and injected into them. And it works, dude. People get really, really good results. In fact, I've got a buddy, not that close of a friend, but a guy that I know, a guy that I hangs around town. I see him in the sauna every once in a while. His knee has been busted up for like the last half a year. He was on a vegan diet for a long time, kind of lost a lot of his bone mineral density and his joint health kind of went to crap. I'm sure he'd never admit because it was because of veganism, but... I'm sure that nutritional deficiencies played a role, but this dude's knees were so swollen, he went and he got his own stem cells removed from his back, or maybe it was his hip, and injected into his knees. Two weeks later, he was walking with ease, whereas he was on crutches and in a wheelchair for months. Dude, I've seen the stuff work. It does work. I'm not a big fan of a lot of the procedures people are doing with stem cells and stuff like this. I think a lot of this stuff can be sketchy. Right? Planned Parenthood, selling baby parts and whatnot, but... The stem cell stuff does work. People's own stem cells do work. I've seen it work on people. I don't know if you know what you're talking about, buddy. 
about getting stem cell injections, the doctor said, hey, it's like, it's a crapshoot whether or not it works. And for some people, it seems to just be um, placebo. So there's Lane Norton science. Some guy told him that it might not work. Some dude told Lane Norton that it might not work. But hey, Lane Norton's got a PhD, so he has impeccable intuition about what is true, what is false, and what claims should be considered. Right? PhD, Dr. Lane Norton, PhD. Packing through the bullshit. He also has some really dubious claims about uh, cancer. Um, you know, he, he, he promotes alternative therapies. Ooh, alternative therapies? Oh my goodness. We all know that alternative therapies are all fake, right? How do we define alternative therapies, Lane Norton? Well, alternative therapies would be anything other than the standard of care, chemotherapy and radiation therapy, right? So anything other than those is totally unscientific because it is declared by the American Medical Association or what is it the uh, the uh, that, what's that cancer group the major cancer uh, um, uh, funny uh, I'm not I forget what it's called but dude come on Lane Norton alternative therapies. Every single new therapeutic approach to treating any disease is going to be alternative as opposed to medical orthodoxy when it's first being used. A ketogenic diet for epilepsy was an alternative therapy that works better than almost any drug for refractory epilepsy. So just blanketly dismissing all alternative therapies, come on, buddy. And I really have a problem with this whole... Like, traditional cancer therapy has failed us. One of the articles... It has failed us. What are the recidivism rates of cancer with traditional therapies? They're mutilating people. Right? Now, maybe you're blessed enough not to have known anybody who's gone through the traditional cancer therapies. Maybe you're blessed enough not to have known anybody who's actually gotten results with non-traditional cancer therapies. But dude, the disrespect towards cancer patients, especially Logan, in this video is out of control. I know, it's just a laugh. I'm just making a list of all the people that suck, according to Lane Norton. But dude, be careful with what you say, man. You're not an expert on cancer. Just because you got PhD behind your name doesn't mean that you're an authority on anything, Lane there's a two times greater risk of cancer for people who seek out alternative therapies versus those who get traditional therapies. I'm not saying... <laughs> you can see his nose grow three inches there. Lane, what the hell are you talking about? There's, let's, let's hear, re please repeat this for us, Lane. Please repeat this nonsense that you just spouted. Uh, there's a two times greater risk of cancer for people who seek out alternative therapies versus those who get traditional therapies. There's a two times greater risk of cancer for those who seek out alternative therapies as opposed to those who have traditional therapies. <laughs> All right, th th maybe this makes sense in your mind the way you said this. Who gave you a PhD though, dude? I guess that's an irrelevant question, but a two times greater risk of cancer among those who seek out alternative therapies. Please, where did you find this stat, dude? Where did you find this stat? <laughs> and th and please reword that next time. Try to make it make sense. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to modify your diet. I'm not saying that there might be other things that can't be effective, but it should not ever take the place of the standard of care. Currently, when people seek out alternative treatments, they usually don't do the standard of care. So it's troubling that he promotes this. He's also... <laughs> Man, he's got as many jump cuts as Goji Man there. Just to get through those three sentences, there was like 15 jump cuts. Um, so real, real smooth talking from Lane here. Alternative cancer therapies equals bad, okay? Also uh, anti-vaccine, and he's had, uh, even had breathitarians on his broadcast who, I guess these are people who believe like they don't need uh, anything that they can just get everything they need from the sun in the air. A lot of really dubious claims from him, and especially the, the really troubling part for him is it he is furled brow. very, very evidence-based. While there are some I'm things puzzled. I guess you consider I'm puzzled. I'm puzzled at Ben Greenfield there's look. There's very little that he promotes that's actually supported by science. Dr. Eric Berg. Hey, Dr. Berg. <gasps> Dr. Berg. We're talking about how to raise testosterone in men. Eric Berg. 
Now, Lane knows how to raise testosterone naturally in men. Right? We've all seen the pictures. Lane Norton, savage, savage, natural bodybuilder, drug-free bodybuilder. Um, Dr. Eric Berg, another guy who's got a bigger following than Lane Norton. What a surprise. Is not a physician. Hey, it's Dr. Berg here. Hey, it's Dr. Berg here. So uh, he promotes DR in front of his name, but he's not a physician. Lane Norton, PhD, Dr. Lane Norton, PhD, also is not a physician. You know what Lane Norton is? He's a physique coach. He coaches people how to starve themselves and get on stage oiled up, rubbed down by some creepy dudes. <laughs> he trains people to get on stage and prance around and be judged. And guess what? These people pay to do this. Lane pays money to do his fitness competitions. He doesn't even get paid. The only people who pay Lane are the people who are dumb enough to be into the fitness industry, to be involved in these eating disorder pageants. Lane Norton, PhD, who wants to be called Dr. Lane Norton, you're not a physician either, bro. Even though a lot of people seem to appear to think he is. And he's a low carb zealot. And one of my favorite. Low carb zealot. So he's been declared a low carb zealot, therefore he is a low carb zealot. So uh, I guess since you promote inter if it, not intermittent fasting, but if it fits your macros, if it fits your microwave, does that make you an IIFYM zealot? I mean, you're more zealously opposed to anybody promoting a ketogenic or low-carb approach or even a paleo diet. You're more zealously opposed to that than most of these people who actually promote it. Now, you're calling Dr. Berg a zealot. I'm not saying I agree with things that Dr. Berg says. I'm not saying that I back everything that he puts out there. But dude, <laughs> you're more zealously anti-keto than any of these keto promoters are pro-keto. Quotes from him are one of his favorite claims. He had a, a post on Instagram where he said, "What the biggest reason you're not losing weight on keto is because you're not fasting correctly. You're not intermittent fasting correctly. Yeah, it couldn't possibly be that they're eating, you know, an extra thousand calories from butter per day because apparently butter is fine for you. No. So another straw man against keto. Like there are many people who are promoting keto. I'm not actually sure what Dr. Berg's position is on calories, right? But obviously calories matter. Lane's whole thing is to say that only calories matter and to straw man anybody who's talking about the hormonal effect on satiety, on the effects of a ketogenic diet, on lowering hunger levels and making it easy to adhere long term to a lower calorie intake and helping people to naturally decrease their calories. Lane will never talk about that. Lane simply says, all keto zealots say you just drink as much butter as you possibly can, right? Classic straw manning tactic, slaying the imaginary haters and the imaginary zealots one by one. Classic Lane Norton. It's because they aren't fasting long enough. Well, I guess if they fast for most of the day and don't eat, that creates what we call caloric restriction and you can lose weight. This whole, the entire carbohydrate insulin hypothesis has been disproven so many times over. And I've talked about it most... What, what carbohydrate insulin hypothesis? All right. Which straw man version are you going to throw out there now? All right. Slaying them straw men one by one. That's a great screen capture right there. My videos, I talk about my ebook, Fat Loss Forever. Mm. There's quite a few research studies that have shown that you can lose the same amount of weight even though one diet has higher insulin levels. There you go, guys. So ignore everything anybody who tells you about keto says. And by Lane Norton's book. Lane Norton, PhD, sorry, doctor. And there's actually the biggest nail in the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity, I think, is there's a drug out there that you can take that increases, uh, it's a GLP-1 mimic, and it causes you to release more insulin. It also causes fat loss. So if insulin causes fat gain, is the primary driver of fat gain, how can a drug that significantly increases insulin also cause fat loss? It doesn't vibe. Sorry, all calories matter. Finally, uh... Yeah, obviously all calories matter, but to say that all calories are the same is retarded. Right? To say all calories are the same is ridiculous. A thousand calories of protein and fat are treated very differently hormonally 
than a thousand calories of donuts. So to simply say it's only about calories is as ridiculous as the people that you straw man and say are claiming that calories don't matter. It's just as ridiculous. Jason Fung, Dr. Jason Fung, three of the most influential human beings in the history of the world all agreed on one thing. It's the most powerful natural healing solution ever. One that's been used by all cultures all over the world, and one that's virtually forgotten today. What am I talking about? Fasting. He had a book called The Obesity Code, and it's basically the same story. Another low-carb seller. <laughs> Another low carbs out. So an actual doctor, a nephrologist, talks about fasting, the benefits of fasting, which have been proven time and time again. There are many benefits to fasting for both health, fat loss, longevity, reducing inflammation, and maintaining insulin and gaining insulin sensitivity. But he's a zealot, right? He's a zealot because science, PhD, Dr. Lane Norton, PhD, has said it is so. He has declared it so. A specialist, and I think people have a really, there are good doctors out there with regards to nutrition, and when I say doctors, I mean physicians, but physicians inherently do not get a lot of nutrition education, and Dr. Fung makes some really dubious claims in, in his book, and he also kind of made a post where he basically implied that <laughs> his clients have never needed uh, loose skin. So putting words in his mouth, I'm going to say he implied that clients didn't need surgery for loose skin because they were fasting. <laughs> so you're not even allowed to make any, any claims that Lane Norton might disagree with, or he's gonna call you a zealot. So he just dismisses all of Jason Fung's work as dubious. He makes dubious claims. And I found one post that I can misrepresent to discredit him. So don't listen to Jason Fung. He's a zealot. Buy Lane Norton's ebook. Grease yourself up, jump on stage in your skivvies, and let some 55-year-old, 250-pound uh, weirdo pedophiles judge your physique and pay for it. You pay for it. Not the weirdos who are watching and judging. You pay for it. Don't listen to doctors like Jason Fung. They're just zealots. Surgery because they do intermittent fasting. That if you intermittent fast... Uh, maybe you won't need, maybe you won't have loose skin. There's no evidence that intermittent fasting is superior for weight loss. None. If you equate calories, intermittent fasting produces the same amount of weight loss as non-intermittent fasting. Now, there... But how does intermittent fasting affect your natural caloric intake? See, constantly side-skirting the real claims that people are making and misrepresenting them and straw-manning them. But hey... Right? It's just kind of like out-angling someone, right, Lane? You know all about that. You know all about the camera angles. You get at the right angle, you're going to look bigger. You're going to look more jacked. And you're an expert at that. Is evidence that some people, perhaps it's a personality thing, do better with what we call time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting, but it's not magic. They only no one says it's magic. Because it's easier for them to create a calorie deficit. Finally, Fung has also claimed caloric restriction increases anabolic hormones. That's not true. Uh, perhaps if you're extremely obese and you lose weight to get back to normal, maybe your testosterone goes up a little bit. But anabolic hormones like insulin, testosterone, both of those drop during caloric restriction. Growth hormone can rise during periods, but growth hormone is not anabolic. Despite the name growth hormone, growth hormone does not cause increases in skeletal muscle hypertrophy. Even when injected, it increases total body water and it increases connective tissue mass. It does not increase skeletal muscle mass. And I'm pretty sure Jason Fung didn't say that fasting makes you build muscle. Again, misrepresenting them intentionally. It's, it's like you can't help it, Lane. It's like you can't help it actually addressing the claims that people are actually making. You are the straw man, arm wrestling king of the fitness industry on the internet, Lane. Let's let you finish up, because I'm sick of your damn voice. And in fact, people who have uh, acromelody, which is they secrete growth hormone way too much, uh, they do not have more muscle mass for their height than a normal person. So sorry, growth hormone not anabolic. He didn't say that. It's an anti-catabolic hormone. I'm, I don't speak for Dr. Fung, 
But when the people are making claims about intermittent fasting, they say that intermittent fasting and extended fasting increases growth hormone, which will actually help you to spare lean muscle tissue. Nobody's out there saying you're going to get jacked by not eating. Only Lay Norton is out there slaying the straw man zealots for their claims that Lay Norton makes up. All right, guys, there's the top five worst offenders of science in the fitness industry. Now I need you guys to vote on your top offender of science. Off this list of five, I need you to comment below and tell me who you think the worst offender of science is. Ah, the worst offender of science. All right, so out of all these people you named, I couldn't find one. I don't remember a single one whose claims you actually refuted. So who's the bigger offender of science here? These people making a living, daring to promote something different than PhD Dr. Lane Norton PhD promotes. Or Lane Norton, who's pretending to speak on behalf of science. I would say the bigger offender of science is you, Lane. You don't speak for science. Science is not an entity. It is a process. Lane Norton, PhD, speaking on behalf of science, slaying the zealots, and shutting up the imaginary haters every single day on social media. So be sure to follow Lane for more laughs, more lulls, and more ridiculousness from one of the most trollable people on the internet ever. Now I'm going to leave you with one little anecdote about Lane Norton. Here is a comment from YouTube. I saw Lane Norton at a grocery store in Tampa yesterday. I told him how cool it was to meet him in person, but I didn't want to be a douche and bother him and ask him for photos or anything. He said, oh, like you're doing now? I was taken aback, and all I could say was, huh? But he kept cutting me off and going, huh, 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 and closing his hand shut in front of my face. <sighs> I walked away and I continued with my shopping and I heard him chuckle as I walked off. When I came to pay, for my stuff, to, uh, to pay for my stuff up front, I saw him trying to walk out the doors with like 15 gallons of milk in his hands without paying. That's pretty impressive, Lane. 15 gallons of milk in your hands? There must be some big mitts you got there. The girl at the counter was very nice about it and professional. It was like, sir, you need to pay for those first. At first he kept pretending to be tired and not hear her, but eventually turned back around and brought them to the counter. When she took one of, the cart one of the cartons and started scanning it multiple times, he stopped her and told her to scan them each individually to prevent any electronic interference and then turned around and winked at me. I don't even think that's a word. After she scanned each bar and put them in a bag and started to say the price, he kept interrupting her by yawning really loudly. So there's Lane Norton for you. This is how Lane Norton, PhD, treats his loyal fans. His poor loyal fans. Just maybe trying to get an autograph or something. You know, maybe just trying to get to know this cool guy that they saw on the internet. Cuts him off, says, huh, huh, huh. And closing his hands sh shut in front of my face. Right? I told him it was cool to meet him in person, but I didn't want to be a douche and bother him and ask him for photos or anything. He said, oh, like you're doing now. There you go, guys. Lane Norton. Topped only by the great Jason Blaha. As the voice of reason in the fitness internet community. What do you guys think? And have you ever run into Lane Norton in a grocery store? How do you think he would treat you if you saw him trying to walk out with 15 gallons of milk? Now, I don't speak on behalf of science like Lane claims to. But my thesis is that the biggest offender of science here is not Logan. 
who's using a ketogenic diet to treat his brain cancer. It is not Ben Greenfield, who masturbates himself profusely with a multitude of machines on a daily basis. The biggest offender of science is the grown-ass man who likes to prance around in spandex, scream and yell at the weight sets, who says he speaks on behalf of science. You know, when it comes to competition, you know, when you step on stage with somebody, if you want to win, you got to hate that person. And if that means that you've got to beat your friend or you've got to beat somebody you really like, you better not be scared to do that, because if you are, you're not going to win. If you've ever watched Lane lift, his intensity is a, is a little bit more outgoing than mine. Come on! He tends to get a little bit louder, ah! a little bit more animated. Ah! Sometimes we'll be in the weight room and I can see Nick checking out some girl's ass or something like that. And maybe it's just because I, I have a lovely fiance, but you know, if I'm in there, I'm in there to lift. You'll see him march through the gym, getting ready to go and do a set and talking to himself and getting himself pumped up. Let's roll! He lifts hard, he just kind of keeps it in. I'm very vocal. People look at me like I'm some psycho sometimes. I say to each their own, you know, if that's what he has to do to get himself through the day or through his workouts, then that's fine. Uh, it's, it's not for me, though. They said you were done! They said you had no chance! I got you, baby! Arch this rock! Come on! Come on! Sit down, let's go! Come on, Dominic! Come on! Come on! Come on. Oh, that is easy! That's a joke! <laughs> Will you sacrifice to win? Down. Up, up, up. Yes. Easy. 